The James Webb Telescope found a ghost planet with a spinning discon that changes everything we thought we knew about how planets are born. Out in a dark part of space called NGC 1333, scientists found six giant planets floating with no stars, no orbits, and no rules. Stay with us, because what Webb saw next could reveal a hidden rule of the universe that we were never meant to find out. Out in space, about 960 light-years from Earth, lies a dark, cloudy stretch of sky called NGC 1333. It's a newborn nursery, a place where stars are supposed to form, but deep in the dark clouds, something is moving that could change how we understand star birth. But one day, something strange showed up in the lens of the James Webb Space Telescope, something that did not follow the rules. Instead of spotting baby stars wrapped in glowing clouds, scientists found six wandering giants, massive planets all alone. No suns, no orbits, just floating out there in space like they had been tossed away. They were each somewhere between 5 and 15 times heavier than Jupiter, big, cold and silent. And they weren't circling anything. They were just there. They weren't supposed to be. See, in school they teach you. Planets form around stars. First, a star is born from dust and gas. Then, leftover bits from the star's birth spin around and clump together. That's how you get planets like Earth, Jupiter and Mars. But these six weren't doing that. They weren't anywhere near a star. And they weren't small either. Some of them were almost big enough to count as small stars themselves. Astronomers have a name for these kinds of oddballs, brown dwarfs. But that's just a fancy way of saying failed star. They're too big to be regular planets, but too small to shine like real stars. These brown dwarfs don't burn hot. They don't light up the sky. They just sit there, halfway between being something and being nothing. But even that didn't explain it all. One of the six ghost giants had something wrapped around it, a disk, a ring of dust and gas, just like the ones that circle young stars. That ring is the kind of place where moons and tiny planets can form, like how Earth's moon formed billions of years ago. Now, if that ghost giant had really been thrown out of a star system like a kicked-out guest, there's no way it would still have that disk. The journey would have ripped it off, but the disk was still there, floating peacefully around this silent world, like a clue in a cosmic mystery. That meant something big. This ghost giant likely didn't get kicked out. It wasn't born like a planet. It was born like a star. Ray Jayawardana, a space scientist from Johns Hopkins, said it clear. Nature makes these kinds of objects in two different ways. Some form like stars, when clouds of gas collapse on themselves. Others form like planets, when tiny bits stick together in a disk around a star. But here's the thing. The James Webb Space Telescope should have seen smaller ones too. It's strong enough to spot objects less than five times Jupiter's mass. But it didn't. Not one. Nothing smaller than that popped up in NGC 1333. That tells us something strange. In that part of the sky, nothing tiny gets made by stardust collapse. There's some kind of cutoff. Below a certain size, the universe chooses a different recipe. This discovery wasn't just about finding something. It was also about not finding what they expected. Imagine baking a batch of cookies, but only the giant ones come out of the oven, no small ones. You'd start to wonder, can small cookies even bake at this temperature? That's what scientists were thinking. Why didn't Webb see tinier objects floating out there? Maybe the universe has rules about how small something can be if it's going to form like a star. The truth is, nobody has figured out exactly where that cutoff is. These six lonely giants, some with dusty halos, some floating free, are giving us a hint. But it's still just a piece of the puzzle. Researchers are now looking at other parts of the sky, hoping to find more ghost planets, maybe even smaller ones, Maybe places like the Orion Nebula, which is even more packed with stars and dust. These objects may not shine, 
but they aren't dead. One of them is the lightest ever seen with a disk of its own. That means it might be forming tiny moons or even smaller planets around it, a kind of mini solar system without the sun. Just imagine that, a planet alone in the dark, forming a family of its own, a floating world, building moons in silence. If those six giants weren't enough to shake the rules, what came next would make the old playbook feel even more out of date. Back when scientists first started looking at the night sky with real tools, it was easy to sort things out. Big, hot things that lit up on their own. Stars. Smaller, colder things that circled stars. Planets. Done. But space does not care about our categories. Brown dwarfs, these failed stars, have always been a problem. They glow a little when they're young, but not from fire. Not from the kind of nuclear fusion that powers real stars. Instead, they're just hot from being squished together by gravity. Over time, they cool down and fade. Some end up as dark as coal. But they're still huge. Many are heavier than Jupiter by several times. The six rogue giants found in NGC 1333 were right in this in-between zone. Big enough to raise eyebrows. Not big enough to turn into stars. Still, what made them shocking wasn't just their size. It was their loneliness. Every planet we know, from Mercury to Neptune, and every gas giant in between, orbits a star. That's what makes them planets. They spin around something. But these six new worlds, they don't spin around anything. They drift. They wander. They roam. The name scientists use is rogue planets. But really, it's more like space orphans, born from the universe's dust, but raised in the cold dark far from any family of light. Now, some of these rogue planets might have been kicked out. Imagine a young solar system, packed full of newborn planets swirling around a star. One gets too close to a bigger planet, or maybe two planets have a fight over space. One of them gets shoved out like a losing marble. Goodbye, orbit. Hello, deep space. That's one way to make a rogue planet. But the James Webb team doesn't think that's what happened here. Let's go back to the one ghost planet with the dusty disk still wrapped around it. That little detail changes everything. If something was born near a star and then got ejected, the powerful force that kicks it away would also strip off anything fragile, like a disk of dust and gas. That disk would be torn to bits. It wouldn't survive the blast, but this one did. It still had its disk spinning around it like Saturn's rings on steroids. That means this planet wasn't kicked out. It never had a star to begin with. It was born free. Scientists believe it came to life like a star, when a huge cloud of gas collapsed under its own weight. But that cloud didn't have enough mass to form a true star. So instead, it formed something smaller, a brown dwarf, a quiet ghost, not a spark of fire, just a quiet glow, fading slowly over time. This may not sound dramatic, but it is one of the biggest changes in how we think about planets and stars. Until now, those were two separate ideas. Planets came from stars. Stars came from gas clouds. Period. Now, the James Webb Telescope is saying, nope, the universe is messier than that. James Webb is strong enough to see objects smaller than five times the size of Jupiter. It's like having a flashlight that can see dust bunnies under the bed and turning it on, but seeing nothing. None of the floating objects Webb spotted were smaller than five Jupiter masses, not one. That tells scientists something really important. When nature makes things the star way, by collapsing a cloud of gas, it might have a bottom limit. Anything smaller than five Jupiters? Maybe that's just too small to form this way. Maybe those smaller things only form like regular planets, in disks around stars. In other words, there might be two recipes, a star recipe and a planet recipe. But you can't mix and match. You can't use the star recipe to make something smaller than five Jupiter masses. If that's true, it answers a question that's been bugging space scientists for decades. What is the smallest thing that can form like a star? 
Ray Yayawardana, the scientist leading part of this discovery, has been chasing this question for nearly 20 years. He wanted to know where the line is, the lowest mass that can form like a star. This discovery is a big hint, but even Ray isn't ready to slam the book shut just yet. He knows this one cluster, NGC 1333, might not tell the whole story. It's just one piece of space, one classroom. He wants to look at other places too, especially denser clusters like the Orion Nebula, where star building gets more crowded, more violent. In Orion, another team had found objects even smaller than five Jupiter masses. That had raised the possibility that maybe some of those tiny things formed like planets and were then kicked out. If so, the way a cluster is packed could change what kind of ghosts it makes. Still, this NGC 1333 group is the cleanest proof yet. The lightest object seen with a disk, a dusty spinning halo around something barely heavy enough to be called a star. That disk matters more than you think. Disks like that are where planets are born, even moons. Earth's moon likely formed from debris circling early Earth. Jupiter's massive moons came from the disk that spun around it billions of years ago. So what if this rogue object, the smallest of the six, had its own moons growing? What if it's building a miniature solar system in the dark? That would be like finding a campfire in the middle of a desert. No house, no town just flames in the night, and the only reason we saw any of this, that wild, risky machine floating a million miles from home, long before it saw ghost planets drifting through deep space, before it captured ancient galaxies glowing from the edge of time, before it became the sharpest eye humanity ever aimed at the stars, the James Webb Space Telescope was just an idea, a wild one. Back in the late 1980s, before the Hubble even launched, some space scientists were already dreaming bigger. Hubble was good, great even, but it saw space the same way we see Earth, with visible light. That is just a slice of what is out there. To really see the oldest, most hidden things in the universe, the first stars, the first galaxies, the raw beginnings, we would need something colder, something stronger, something that could see the invisible glow of heat, infrared light that light is ancient it has been stretched and softened by billions of years of cosmic expansion to catch it we would need a telescope unlike anything ever built and so a dream was born in the beginning it was just papers drawings big hopes on thin sheets they called it the next generation space telescope a project so bold it did not even have a full design yet just a vision, a giant gold mirror, a sun shield the size of a house, and no backup plan. By the mid-1990s, the dream got real. NASA teamed up with the European and Canadian space agencies. They began turning those sketches into blueprints, but this was no easy machine. Everything had to fold to fit inside a rocket. It had to survive freezing cold, and it had to fly a million miles from Earth with no chance of repair. Then came the costs, the delays, the engineering headaches, years passed, tests failed, budgets swelled from billions to more billions. But the scientists did not quit. They refined, they upgraded, they rebuilt. In 2002, the telescope got its name. Not just any name, it was named after James E. Webb, the NASA chief from the Apollo days a man who believed science was just as important as landing people on the moon, a man who fought to keep big ideas alive, this telescope would carry his name and his spirit. After more than 20 years of building, fixing and waiting, the day came. December 25th, 2021, Christmas morning. The James Webb Space Telescope launched from South America aboard a rocket called Ariane 5. The world held its breath, it soared. Stage by stage, it unfolded like a space flower. The sun shield opened, the mirror clicked into place. Every step, hundreds of them worked like a charm. Weeks later, it reached its new home, a place called L2, a million miles from Earth. 
far enough that the planet's warmth would not mess with its chill. It parked itself in deep freeze around minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit and waited. Then it opened its eyes. In July 2022, the world got its first taste of what Webb could do, and it changed everything. We saw galaxies stacked behind galaxies. We saw glowing rings of gas. We saw newborn stars hiding in dusty clouds. And those were just the test shots. Webb was not just making pretty pictures. It was cracking the code of time. Webb's mirror is the biggest ever sent into space over 21 feet across. It is made of 18 gold-coated hexagons, all working together like puzzle pieces. Each one can move and flex to sharpen the view. But why gold? Because gold reflects infrared light like a dream. And infrared is what Webb was built to see. The mirror grabs that faint heat from distant stars, galaxies and planets, stuff no human eye could ever see, and feeds it to instruments that can slice it, read it and tell its story. That is how we found the ghost planets. That is how we saw galaxies born just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. That is how we are peeking into the past. All this power came with a price tag, a big one. At first, the project was supposed to cost between one and three billion dollars. But as the years ticked by, the number grew. By the time Webb launched, the bill was nearly ten billion dollars. Most of it went into building and testing, Almost another billion went into operations. Still, most scientists say it is worth every penny, because Webb is not just another telescope. It is a time machine, a chemistry lab, a planet hunter, a black hole watcher. It is all of them in one, and it is just getting started. Since launch, Webb has been stacking up discoveries. It spotted a planet in its death spiral, falling into its star, a slow cosmic goodbye. It captured baby stars forming inside the pillars of creation, those iconic towers of gas and dust. It saw eerie rings of gas rippling around dying stars, like smoke from a candle blown out light years ago. It even watched a supermassive black hole gulp down matter, spinning it into heat and light as it vanished forever. Each week, more data pours in. Each month, another chapter in the story of space is rewritten. And scientists, they are scrambling to keep up because some of the things Webb is seeing should not exist, like massive galaxies from the early universe too big too soon, like chemical fingerprints on alien planets, maybe hints of life, maybe something else. It is not just showing us the universe, it is changing how we understand it. Webb was built to last at least 10 years, maybe more, if the fuel holds out. NASA is already planning what comes next. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, due in a few years, will scan wide fields of space, helping Webb zoom in on the best targets. Together, they will track dark matter, chase down rogue planets, and dig deeper into cosmic history. But right now, Webb is leading the way, floating out there, alone, watching everything. The gold mirror, the silent eye, the ghost catcher. When those six rogue worlds showed up in Webb's lens, it was not luck. It was the result of decades of dreaming, building, failing, fixing, and refusing to quit. Webb is more than a telescope. It is a promise that we will keep asking, that we will keep looking, that even in the coldest corners of space, someone or something might be watching back. Here's a big question. What if the Webb telescope isn't just looking at space? What if something is looking back through it? Tell us what you think in the comments. Tap like, hit subscribe and share this video if you enjoy space stories.